Welcome back everybody. Today we've got another long awaited gun gripe for you guys. This has turned into a nice little series and I'm glad to see that you guys have been real perceptive to this stuff. I mean we really touch on a lot of subjects here that uh, we think are important for gun owners and would be gun owners and even for people that are anti-gun. Right. I think if uh, anybody were to watch these videos they would definitely glean some, uh, you know, decent glean, knowledge. Right. You glean knowledge whether you're anti-gun or not. That's right. And we try to keep things straight to the point. So again, today, with this gun gripe, we're going to discuss a very age-old adage, well, as old as these rifles are, and that is, which weapon system is more effective overall, mm -hmm. the AK-47 mm -hmm. or the AR-15? Right. And we know this is a subject that's been beat into the ground numerous times, but we're going to lay out what I hope will be a definitive answer as to why we think you know we choose what we choose and why and uh, hopefully you guys will maybe have a little bit different opinion on these weapon systems. The AK-47 been around for many many years designed by Kalashnikov shoots 30 caliber round hard hitting. The AK-74 it's basically a 22 caliber Russian gun. This is a gun that uh, used to be a Sega and uh, Ray customized it. This shoots a very deadly round. I used to work for a company in 1980 when we were in Afghanistan the first time and a guy came to do a uh, art magazine article for Soldier of Fortune. He had one of these in his pocket and he did. He said this is a secret weapon. He said this is the only round of this kind in the country. They were getting horrendous wounds from this bullet in Afghanistan. They didn't know what was causing it. They finally captured an AK-74 and then they, they analyzed what was going on. Inside the nose of this bullet is a hollow cavity. Even though it's a ball round, there's a hollow cavity. It's a very long, ballistically stable round until it hits something. Then it goes crazy. There were men having their legs chopped off by this thing. This is a very powerful round. It's more powerful than our 5.56. The only disadvantage of this, if you buy an AK-74 caliber gun, is everybody's not going to have ammo for it. So you're going to have to buy it from us. A big box, uh, the big box stores don't even have it. You're going to have to go to a specialty shop. But you get you one of these, lay in about two cases of ammunition, and you're set. This magazine holds 45 rounds of this ammo. Very deadly. And uh, what Barry is referring to with the actual cavity in the nose of the bullet, that's not a new concept to the 74. With the uh, advent of the Druganov rifle that developed a round called 7M1, mm -hmm. which is a sniper round intended for, especially for the Druganov, and that was, to my knowledge, one of the first com block rounds to utilize that type of idea where you have a hollow cavity which displaces and basically Restabilizes bullet upon entry and causes right. just tremendous, tremendous hydrostatic shock. Tremendous wounds. Um, when it comes to the AKs, um, they use a proven system which is known as a piston system. What occurs when the weapon's fired, the hammer drops, fires the cartridge, all of those things occur. The heat and gases expand and push the barrel, uh, I'm sorry, push the bullet out of the barrel. As the bullet passes this area, hot gases quickly expand and exert a quick, rapid force on this gas piston inside of here and push the carrier straight back, restarting the whole operation. As the carrier is drawn forward, or rearward I should say, the hammer is reset, the trigger is reset, the whole operation repeats. That is the basic operation of how this uh, firearm works. The nice thing about the AK is it's extremely reliable. The tolerances that it's built into are, I guess by many standards, considered loose um, yeah. with other guns. They'll operate in dirt, mud, adverse elements, cold, extreme heat, jungle, sand, it doesn't matter. You can dig this thing out of a creek bed, it'll always work. What the AR is set up after is what they call a direct gas impingement system. Once the bullet passes through the barrel and reaches the gas port, same thing occurs. Instead of having a centralized piston in this area that drives rearward like in the AK, in a direct gas impingement system, there's an actual gas key. The gas tube goes all the way back, the gas forces are exerted directly into the carrier of the gun, 
and the gun cycles that way. Now, that has a few disadvantages. One is that if the weapon is not maintained extremely well, it can cause eventual failures. You'll get short strokes, you'll get uh, basically just malfunctions of every type. Uh, but if kept clean, it's a very reliable system, and it's been proven well in many gun designs before the AR-15 came around to begin with. Uh, the FN-49 uh, was one of the rifles to use direct gas impingement. The uh, Hakims and the Lingwins mm -hmm. use the um, direct gas impingement system. So it is a proven system that was around even before this rifle was around. One thing that they did with the AR to marry the two components between AK and AR, they have what is called a piston system for the AR. Now what this does is it allows this weapon to essentially function exactly like the AK, where you have a centralized piston that the gas forces are exerted on, and then basically you've got the marriage between the AK and the AR all in one package. Now, for some people, that's a very nice thing, because you can go for a lot longer without having to clean it, maintain it, and it's just a great setup. Now we're going to show these cartridges close up in a moment on the table to show you the differences between the two because we basically have three different cartridges. This is a M8 is M885. Right. This is the M885 ball round. You'll see it close up in a moment. And then we have the SS109 steel penetrator round. This is the most common um, round of 556 you're going to find in Iraq, Afghanistan. Uh, it does have a mild iron penetrator which is supposed to act as basically to penetrate through light armor, uh, bone, stuff like that. The 5.56 is not a bad cartridge. Originally, the 2.22 Remington and the 2.23 were submitted at the same time for military trials and everything like that. And at the time, Winchester ported a military rifle to compete with Eugene Stoner's AR-15 design, and when they did, the the, um, the Winchester rifle was chambered in an experimental 222 Remington cartridge, which is still around today. The 222 Remington is still a sporting caliber, um, but that rifle design, of course, was not accepted. The AR-15 was chosen with its 223 Remington cartridge, 5.56, what have you, and uh, early reports on the 5.56 and the jungles of Vietnam were less than favorable. Just because of the nature of the cartridge, it's so fast, if it hits anything in the jungle, dense brush, it's going to veer off and everything like that. So a lot of the, uh, the AR-15 got a lot of early bad rap from the soldiers overseas at the time just because of its uh, limited jungle potential. Right. High velocity bullet that explodes when it hits something, it breaks into fragments, whereas your AK round will penetrate heavy bamboo. Uh, this will go through a lot more than that round will. Absolutely. You can take a piece of concrete slab four inches thick and stand it up and you can hit it 15, 20 times with this, it just knocks chunks out of it. You hit it with this about three times, it breaks it in half. This has a lot more impact, but this has a lot more explosive energy because of the velocity. These rounds right here um, are just, they, they're a devastating round at close range within 100 yards, but after that, these, these rounds are more accurate than the AK round. But this is going to hit harder at a distance, even though it's harder to hit with this at a distance. That is correct. The um, the 5.56 ballistically is superior to the 7.62 by 39. It bunks the wind better in many cases. Um, if you use a heavy projectile with a long bearing surface similar to the AK-74 round, the 5.45, the nice thing about this projectile and cartridge combination as it compares to the 5.56 is that the 5.45 by 39 uses a long bullet with a long bearing surface and a relatively square charge. The charge is relatively square as opposed to a elongated charge in the 5.56. Ballistically, you get a good amount of velocity out of a given case capacity when the charge is more square. And that is the idea behind a lot of your super short magnums where they increase, they make the, the volume of the case more square and cylindrical as opposed to long and cylindrical to get gains in velocity. Um, this cartridge is very well designed and very well thought out compared to the 5.56. Ballistically, the 7.62 by 39 is a great cartridge, 
but at long range it can lack the uh, stability needed. I mean, it was never really intended to be a long range cartridge. Its main intention was to be a 300 meter spray and pet prey battle cartridge. With the advent of the AK-47, one of the main you know, types of battle scenarios that the Soviets were expecting were basically the same things they did in, in many battles in World War II, where it's basically just a human line, right? a, a machine gun toting human line. And you would have men maybe a few hundred yards back from the main action with precision rifles that could pick off enemy soldiers that were pinned down. And that's basically what this round is, is intended to be, is a mass-produce, you know, arm everybody with them, get online, lay down superior firepower, and push the enemy back in that sense. It was never intended to be a precision round. Right? Although it is capable of feats of precision with good bullet weights, you use a good heavy charge of powder. From a handloading standpoint, the 762 by 39 is capable of very good feats of accuracy in a good rifle. Well, the AR was also designed for people who are going to take care of it, knowledgeable gun people. This was designed to issue to anybody. You give this out to somebody, show them how to load the magazine, show them how to charge it, show them how to shoot it. That's all they need to know how to do. They shoot it. And the, and the, back in the 50s and 60s, Russia would issue these to anybody who was a communist sympathizer. They, ma they made more AKs than any other weapon in history. They don't even know how many they made. They think, how many, 170 million? Oh, easily. And then easily. you have to consider all the satellite easily. countries that have geared up to make them. I mean, everywhere from Poland, Hungary, China. Well, we're even everywhere. making them. We're even making them in the U.S. Right. Now. Probably Arsenal one of the most Vegas. commonly uh, made rifles in the world, right. still. You know. Right. But this is a precision weapon. It requires somebody to take care of it. This is something you just use. Right. And then again, the marriage of the two elements. You have the piston-driven AR system, which marries those two elements. You get AR precision with AK-like. Reliably, re reliability, and that's uh, for a lot of people. That's kind of what's brought the AR into the mainstream now. Is that uh, you kind of get a uh, good combination of those two points. You know, one thing about the AR that's nice compared to the AK2 is that you get complete uh, modular function with it. You can add different uh, lowers, uppers. I mean, basically, it's just adult Legos. Everything will tack right on. You get uh, your five seven uppers, shotgun uppers. Right. I mean, all kind of different stuff. And of course, that's a modular capability that the AK had, simply can't do. So which one would you choose? After all we've gone through, you know, the pros and cons of each system, which one's better? I would pick the AK-47. Why? Because I think it's tougher, it's easier to maintain, it's, there's, less, there's less small parts in it that are breakage prone, less small springs. Uh, these guns are designed just to use. I agree. I mean, they got these over in the sandbox that are worn completely silver, and they, they just keep loading them and shooting and they them. They keep going. Now, this has its own, but we're trying to compare two different animals here. This is a prom queen, this is a biker bitch. So, they both get the job done, but they do it in different ways. I agree. Okay. I agree. My now, answer... you've been in a sandbox, which one would you pick? i pick the AK. Okay. And... And it's not that I have any kind of, you know, distaste towards the AR. I mean, I think the AR is a great, yeah. great platform. Well, people the, argue uh, too. If you have an AR like this, okay. and you got the magazine in it, you got this dust cover closed, you throw this down in in a sand dune. Well, they they say that sand can't get in. Well, on an AK-47, you got all kind of big openings on an AK. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you throw that down in the sand, it's gonna get full of sand. But all you gotta do is shake it out. And this, this, around, this gun has made loose tolerances. This will crush sand in it when it fires. It turn it to powder. Sure. These, uh, you know, well, if, if, if you go all around and look at the whole picture, the AK-47 is probably a better gun for the average person. For combat. For combat, I mean, yeah. And I would say that my answer, the, the short answer is I would choose the AK, but the long answer would really be akin to, it really depends on the scenario. Right. Um, if I knew that I would have time to maintain my weapon and I knew that ammo availability wasn't an issue between either system, then yeah, a piston AR for clearing rooms and stuff, I would right. prefer an AR for close range combat in urban environments. For slightly longer range, mm -hmm. uh, I, don't, I still just think the AK 
you know, well, we're still going to do a field comparison of the two, and we're going to uh, we're going to see which one shines at 440 yards. This one's going to this one is going to be more accurate than the AK at that distance. But like me and Eric was discussing, who shoots at 440 yards with iron sights anyway? In a scenario, how far would you actually have to shoot somewhere? Like if you was in an urban environment, your shots would be limited to 100, 150 yards at the most. And in which case, either weapon system's completely acceptable. Right. Now, one thing I will say I didn't touch on earlier, we didn't touch on, the iron sights on the AK are definitely lackluster compared to even like this A2 style. It's got a fine rear aperture, fully adjustable, fully adjustable front sight. This is a great setup. Um, a lot of our soldiers, even from uh, I would say about the 40s on, were trained on guns that use aperture sights. Right. M1 Garand, M1 Carbine, pretty much everything on. M14 all use a diopter. Yeah. And everything, yeah. The old O3s, they all use a diopter style sight. Uh, they do lend themselves to good accuracy if you know what you're doing with them. Right. The AK, on the other hand, the iron sights are definitely less than ideal. Now if you have to fire against vehicles, an AK will penetrate more. It'll penetrate glass better, it goes through doors better, it, it punches through metal a whole lot better than an AR-15. Yes. But the, the, the reason they went to this, and uh, you can carry twice, three times as much ammo for the AR as the AK-47 for the same weight. And the magazines are definitely not as bulky. Right. The AR, they're much more compact, easier to carry. Right. The AK-47 magazines they are a little bulky, they are shaped odd, they're not the easiest things to carry. Right. Minor setback once you get used to it. But each one has its own merits, but Absolutely. overall, between the two, I would pick the AK-47. The AK that gets my vote. That would be my choice. The AK definitely gets my vote. And if I had my choice of AKs and money didn't matter, I would look on the internet, I would find yeah, me a yeah. Polytech Legend AK Chinese. I think that's the best AK ever made. Absolutely. Now Val May of Finland made one years ago. It was probably the premier AK. Jesus, if you find one of those, you're talking four or five thousand dollars for that. Absolutely. This is probably the most unique weapons combination I've ever seen. This is a PTR, which is a copy of a G3, but it, it shoots AK ammunition. Takes AK magazines. This is a blowback action. There is no gas system involved here. No gas system at all. This, uh, this is this is this is something I never thought I'd ever see. You combine in German technology with uh, the Russian uh, magazine and the uh, caliber. It's, it's kind of heavy for a 7.62 by 39. But this is a fine weapon right here. Good shooter too. Oh yeah. Great one shooter. thing I noticed about that particular gun is you can't lock drums in it. And that's one thing we didn't discuss. The drum options for both guns are very similar. You do have the 100 round betas for the ARs which run wonderfully. You have 75 and 100 round wind up drums for the AK which work wonderfully. So high cap drum wise, uh, definitely right on par with each other in terms of reliability. So let's have a look at the cartridges and we're going to definitely uh, spin this one down and I think that'll be it for today. Okay. Right here we get the four cartridges that are probably responsible for the most human death in the last 70 years, 60 years. On the far right we have the 762 by 39 millimeter. 762 by 39 millimeter. 762 is the diameter of the projectile. 39 millimeters is the length of the brass casing. Almost all of your metric caliber is going to be set up that way. Same thing for the 545. You have a 22 or 224 diameter projectile with a 39 millimeter long case, 545 by 39 millimeter. Here you have the M885 ball round, it's a 55 grain ball round. That's more of a uh, range practice type round in the 556. Here we have the SS109 green tip. Of course you can tell it by its green tip, it's a 62 grain and uh, that is what most of your military guys are going to be carrying issue-wise is the SS-109. And that's your four cartridges. They all have their merits, they all have their downsides. Overall, I, I personally like the idea of having a uh, nice big 30 caliber slugs back in something. That's just my opinion, but to put it into perspective, the 762 by 51 NATO 
uh, you basically have a similar projectile but on a longer case. Uh, yeah. In terms of the NATO specification, 51 millimeters is the length of your brass. And of course, that's a 308 Winchester commercially. To put that into perspective, you get more case capacity. I'm going to throw you guys a little curveball real quick. The cartridge on the right is actually the first, uh, what would be considered the first assault rifle or storm rifle cartridge ever developed, and that is the nine point or the seven nine two by thirty three millimeter Kurs. Yeah, Kurs literally means short, and this round was developed in conjunction with the MP forty four or as Hitler called it, the Sturmgewehr, which means storm or assault rifle. And Hitler actually had troops that were called storm troopers, which I assume is through histories where George Lucas got the idea for calling storm troopers storm troopers. And a lot of the uniforms from the movie were actually developed from Nazi uniforms. Well, That's a whole other video. Another <laughs> interesting thing about this particular round, Hitler, Hitler forbid them to build rifles they had to they had to disguise this and they called it a pistol because he only he only he prohibited them from making rifles only machine pistols that's correct and that's why the uh, the designation for the Sturmgewehr being MP44 right. would be machine pistol 44 when really it was a really rifle. it was a, it was the first assault rifle it was the first rifle to use an intermediate cartridge it's the same 8 mm projectile slightly lighter and on less powder. And again, the idea was for a soldier to be able to carry more of it and have a higher rate of fire without as much muzzle climb. And the actual ranges that the cartridge was intended for were more on par with what the AK was designed around. Right. So that's the forerunner to the AK cartridge is the uh, original Sturmgewehr cartridge.